Hey everybody, my name is Brian Mullins, and tonight I'm going to show you a presentation that I gave to a recent group of anglers, and I thought I'd record it and put it up on YouTube for them to reference and to anyone else who might find this useful. Uh, what we're going to talk about is using technology to improve fishing success. Uh, when Mary and I first started, we came. Uh, I came from Northern Virginia, and I learned fishing from my father. We did a lot of freshwater only fishing, like ponds, streams, and rivers, and then we moved to Salisbury in '93. Uh, to Johnson's Lake. We you know, kayaked fish for a long time and then later we bought a Skeeter bass boat and Mary and I fished many hours, caught lots of fish, had a great time together. My experience really was all pure freshwater. Uh, then we moved to West Ocean City in 2015. We'd never fished saltwater before. We wanted to catch fish of course, uh, but we thought saltwater was quite different than freshwater and we really knew nothing about the tides and the species of bait or any really of the techniques. We brought with us preconceived ideas about what saltwater fishing entailed. We thought it required a, a precise presentation like freshwater does with real exact uh, lures and weights and things like that. And while it can have that, it's not quite, we, we, our preconceived ideas were it was exactly like freshwater. And we'd heard that live or cut bait was the way to fish and artificials were secondary to real bait. Fishing the tides was important and the water was going to be a lot deeper. And these are again preconceived ideas. We thought it required the same attention to detail and pr um, presentation as in freshwater. For example, in freshwater, if you have a jig head and you put the soft body on there and it doesn't come through just right and lay on the jig head just right and has a little bend or curl in it or it's a little long or you know short and things like that uh, or you don't push it up next to the jig head most importantly you just really we never had any success we wouldn't catch fish um, so we had these ideas we thought line type and weight was very important and freshwater colors mattered a lot so we kind of thought it'd be the same thing and we thought that lure selection and the type was really going to be vital to catching any kind of you know fish in salt water we had a lot of unknowns. We didn't know what fish were available, what bait to use, what lures to use, if any. Uh, we didn't know how the tide and current played into our planning. We didn't know where to find fish, both in location and depth in the water column. We didn't know how much weight to use, what lure weight or sinker weight. Uh, we didn't know if freshwater tactics and techniques would apply. Uh, the bottom line, it was a mystery to us, but we knew, you know, we were going to make the process enjoyable. We were going to enjoy the journey. But at the same time, we wanted to minimize the learning curve, you know, when possible. You know, the clock is ticking, you know. So we began. So in the beginning, we do what most everybody does. Uh, we went around to local tackle shops and asked questions. And really, you know, they're kind of busy and all these things. So they're, you know, they were a little less fruitful to us than we anticipated. And, and by that, we really mean we were expecting exact how-to details on how to fish saltwater because we had the preconceived ideas it would be the same as freshwater. And I'll give you an example of that. In freshwater, for example, if Mary was fishing with this grub tail here and was throwing the lure out and she was catching fish, if I had everything identical, same jig head, same weight, same spinner bait, same line, same everything, uh, and I was using a different color, let's say like this one that's you know similar but not quite the same, uh, I might not catch a single fish. She'd be catching fish. If I took this grub tail off, added her color to it, boom, I'd instantly start catching fish. This is another example. This scum frog uh, popper uh, that we would use. You know, Mary might throw a black one and I throw a dark green one. Both of them had the same tails on them, the same colors, same exact weight. Again, everything identical, just one was dark green, one was black. She might get all the hits. You know, she might catch two bass and I didn't even get anything to explode on mine. I'd switch out to a black one and boom, we'd start catching fish together. So those things were real precise and in freshwater, that stuff really matters. And again, we thought that was the same in saltwater. Not that it isn't sometimes, but it's clearly not quite that uh, picky uh, from our experience. And in the end, we were probably a nuisance to them as well, where we were just kind of asking more questions and digging in. And they just didn't have the answers because they necessarily didn't need to have the answers. They weren't necessary. So uh, I would talk to other fishermen I'd meet when I was kayaking or paddle boarding and also on land. I also observed anyone fishing whenever I could, either on the water, the bridges, the jetties, four streets, stuff like that. So we learned a little, but it was just a little. And the, and the realities are it was too slow for us. You know, we needed to learn more. We really were excited and wanted to catch something, but there still were a lot of variables to us. So we began fishing, took some gulp, threw it out, and we started catching small fish like this. So what we did at that point is we started turning to technology to begin, you know, learning how to fish. And all these that are listed here, I'm going to go through uh, as quickly as I can and talk to you about some of the things that we started doing to help us get better in learning the fishery. And hopefully these things will help you out. So, for example, Coastal Fisherman has a digital archive, you know, it's Facebook and people and fishermen you can follow and other services like guide services on there. YouTube videos, YouTubes from others that are local or non-local 
Google Earth, various websites, your, your sonar, and then you know, we finish making our own, own videos. So I look at this as kind of like levels of learning. You know, the first level for us was reading social media, just staring at things, watching videos, reading websites, and then trying to apply that to our learning and our fishing adventures, and then develop our skills and opinions based on what we watched or read, what we applied, and then what was working here and what wasn't working here at the time being. I'm going to give you some examples of just simply going into social media and uh, finding out things. So this is from the Coastal Fisherman and Facebook, these these next few slides. So this is Get Some Charters. He's a local guide, John here. Or no, that's uh, uh, Nick. Um, he's with uh, OC Guide Service. So he's going on here and he's got this 25-inch uh, flounder and he caught it on gulp and white swimming mullet. So, you know, as a, someone who didn't know anything, you just make a note to this. Okay, um, there's these fish here. They're flounder. They're caught in the bay. They're, uh, so they can be 25 inches, and they like gulp, uh, swimming mullet, whatever that is. So you make a note of it. Here's OC Guide Service John here. He says, fish bites were on fire today. So here he says, bag of worms and shrimp fish bites. So here, maybe that's shrimp and worm flavored, uh, something called fish bites here. And again, you might have a clue from previous fishing, but easy to find out. But anyway, you make note of it. Here's a guy catching flounder on complete artificials. Uh, then this guy here, John says, tackle tip, tipping your sabiki with fish bites is a, as a ticket for cold water bait fishing. So when we look at these pictures too, you can always look around and you know, where are they fishing? Uh, what are they using here? I see this lead piece of lead on here and looks like, uh, maybe a fish finder set up here. Uh, maybe that drags behind it, just dangles in the water. Uh, here's a sabiki rig. Uh, it's a teeny little setup with teeny little hooks. He's got little pieces on there, and it looks like fish bites is what he uses. And I'll take a note of where he's at. You know, maybe this is a spot that might have some of those kind of fish. Next example is a dude here. He uh, goes out, fishes on something, the South Jetty uh, Roy rig. He uses some bait lure called Roy Rig, called a 33-inch keeper rockfish. Okay, so there's rockfish around here. And then where you can find these Roy Rigs. Okay, so, you know, make a note of that. Here's this dude here. Uh, he's got a 35-inch striper, caught it slack-tied around the south jetty, and he hooked it on a topwater plug. You know, hey, that's awesome information. Here's another picture. Here's a guy using a topwater lure that doesn't appear to be a topwater lure. They're out here by the jetty, and it looks rather rough. It kind of looks overcast, too. So overcast, rough, topwater, south jetty. Okay, this gentleman here, Brad McCabe, Baytime Charters. He does a little flounder fishing. He's fishing the west channel near the thoroughfare, and it ends up uh, not having enough hands to hold these keeper flounder. So make note of that. Okay, there's a gentleman fishing for flounder, west channel and near the thoroughfare. So, uh, you know, that's something to explore. There's fish around that area based on what this guy has uh, shown us. Here's a guy here, Ted, 26-inch, 12-pound sheep's head in the inlet last night. Um, blue and white bass assassin on a jig head. So complete freshwater lure. Fascinating. Here's one here. Here's a guy using a spinner bait, probably one ounce or so. Uh, some orange, there's some purple, some black in it with a little paddle tail on that. Some uh, blades on here. He's over here. This is a 50 bridge. This is Martha's Landing. So we got this guy throwing complete freshwater lures, catching saltwater fish. So again, excellent information. So, you know, we learned a lot by that. You know, you can learn tons of that. And if you like write this stuff down and log it and really chew on it and uh, research it, you can really get your knowledge. And this is more level one stuff. So we found out fresh and saltwater tactics mix well in Ocean City. Artificials lure uh, works. Flounder, rockfish, and sheep's head are in the waters of this area. Something called gulp and fish bites catch flounder. And there's some, maybe a worm and shrimp flavor. The West Channel and Thoroughfare Fair have flounder. Topwater lures work, which is great for Mary and I. That's our favorite way to fish. And fish were caught at slack tide. So, okay, maybe it doesn't always have to be moving water. Uh, so I'm going to show you some examples here. Um, so that was what's on social media. Here's what you might find on YouTube. One is, uh, you know, a couple local videos that were made, okay? Let's see here. Here's this dude right here. Goes out fishing, pulls his boat up, throws a bait caster. It's got some lure on it. Puts his boat in neutral and starts reeling. Da, 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 da. Hey, got a fish. So let's see what he's got here. Pulls this thing up, and he's got a rockfish, and he's using a, an umbrella rig. If we stop it right here, we can see that here's hoop, uh, hoopers, and here's the 50 bridge. So incoming tide, look at the sun angle. This is more of a morning type of bite, so a more, uh, you know, probably a 10 a.m., a 9 a.m. bite. 
uh, incoming tide, Route 50 bridge. Okay, sounds good. That's local. That's right here. Here's Scott Lennox, has a hooked on OC, posts a lot of stuff. He does daily fishing reports, tons of information here. Yeah, this video I consider exceptional. He actually shows you the species of fish in the bay, shows you exactly what kind of lures uh, or bait to use, um, goes right through it. Hey, here's some shiners. He's talking about tall tog. He might be talking about flounder. Anyway, you know, complete, you know, you go right through this whole thing, continues to show you different, different ways, different things he's using to catch, you know, different types of fish. So quite, quite lovely. So boom, right on YouTube, things to learn right there. Make notes on it. Here's some examples of uh, YouTubers that are making videos that are in different locations, but catching these same species, okay? Here's a gentleman, and I would recommend this guy, uh, John Skinner. He's just sitting here talking about handle. his exact I would setup never go back to on using this. So he's talking about using this bait caster and this longer butt on this rod. He's showing that this little uh, setup he's using and why he likes to use it. He goes through and shows what kind of weights, uh, lures he uses and the sizes of them. I mean, incredible information here. And then shows examples of it, you know. So, you know, superb, superb information. Here's a guy here that takes, uh, goes out tog fishing. He's on a kayak and his tog rig is whole fresh shrimp with a 4.0 eagle claw hook with two to three ounce sinker. You know, just that's valuable information, you know. You know, if, if I were starting out fishing here, uh, when we did, and I, you know, you get this information from this guy, you know, you fish right by the rocks, you drop these down in here. If you find these fish, they're going to bite it. You know, that's really valuable, great information. Okay. So other sites too. Okay. That's, uh, you know, social media, then there's YouTube and then here's various websites here. Okay. Let me show you some, show you some of these. So this is, you know, uh, tides for fishing, you know, all kinds of information here goes into uh you know just not just tides but how much the current's going to move it gives you a coefficient gives you an example here's the all the tides here here's your moon phases here's your so lunar activity which is a theory i'm not necessarily subscribing to it but i'm not going to write it off and it gives you major and minor periods where fish might be a little more active uh so you know lots of information there delmarva fishing report here um this is stripers online go in here and they have active fishing reports you can find out you know this dude uh got john from all tackle gave him some great bait uh, and he put together and got a 49 inch feisty female um so you know talks about his gear all this stuff is very you know useful information noah uh buoy data here you go in here and find out what time it is the knots the gusts that what the pressure is doing here it's dropping so we have a storm coming our way uh, and we are in this particular case uh tonight there's air temperature and water temperature, you know, you know, super valuable information. You know what I mean? So on and on and on, lots of website information. And if you take this information and you start writing it down and you start thinking about it and say, I'm going to apply some of these tactics and these locations and all that, you are going to catch fish. And again, level one stuff, just building your knowledge. Um, and, you know, people post things, you might even have a greater level of knowledge, but just simply get a tip or find some information. So after that is really using additional technologies. These are things readily available. Level two would be some other things. One great technology to use is Google Earth. They update these satellite photos every once in a while and update them on their programs and you can come in. You got specific location data here. And you can go around and look and see around your fishery where you can fish and get your boat. Uh, at least in the bay anyway, and get some ideas on some some tactics, you know. You know, that, that picture with John Prather with the fish bites, he was right here. So if you use a Sabiki big and f rig and fish bites, you might go to this spot, you may be able to catch some uh, some bait fish, you know. Who knows? You know, it's, a, it's certainly something to try. Certainly this channel here I knew nothing about before I started looking on Google Earth. Uh, and there's a nice deep channel where I would obviously be fishing this area over here. Uh, and there's certainly less traffic than over here. So that'd be a great place to fish, you know, uh, you know, right here as well. Look at this nice sandbar up here. You know, there's a, you know, obviously a transition here. I'd be looking for flounder here, you know, um, you could also take this and say, okay, this is a bit shallower. It looks a bit deeper on this side. This might be the deepest section and you might plan there. You know, if you're wanting to fish more of the channel, this might help guide you a little bit as well. It just gives you some ideas. This is a great example. We actually used this last weekend. Um, 
looking at Google Earth and uh, notice this little dip here that we weren't really going to get to on a boat. Certainly you could do that on a kayak. Uh, but, you know, there's a nice little transition on the end of this. Oh, let's see if this fades out. Um, obviously transitions elsewhere. So down here, there's this transition here. We, we fished this little transition as this fell off and they were flounder sitting here. They were, they were there. Google Earth gave us some ideas on doing it. And obviously if we're out fishing, you see other boats catching fish, or, you know, you're going to make notes as well. Uh, so this area looks real nice too. There's a little channel here. We'd be fishing this, and this is a slower channel drop off. But you might find fish one day that are in like six feet of water. The next day, they might be in 10 feet of water, you know. But if you have some ideas of Google Earth, like, you know, how this works, you can couple it with your other technologies and really get some ideas together. This is a great place. Down below here is right the West Channel, and over here is the thoroughfare. And these are two areas coming together. In that previous social media we read about, this guy said he was catching keeper flounder, West Channel thoroughfare area. So I might fish this whole area and try to find it. Obviously, this section here looks real good to me. This is a fairly steep drop off. I might look for something a little bit more gradual. But, um, you know, this area here, too. This looks like it's a little bit deeper than this area. So I might try that as well. Again, ideas, ideas, ideas. Take that information, use your chart plotter. Here's a prime example. Mary and I fish in the summer. Uh, go on the thoroughfare. Here's the channel. It comes up off the channel uh, into the shallower section. And Mary and I noticed when we would drift from here, go this direction across this ledge. When we get up on the ledge, our bait got on the ledge, we catch a flounder. And we drive back and do it again, catch another flounder. Drive back, do it again, catch another flounder. Clear, great way to use technology to help dial in your fishing. So, you know, Al Lindner from In Fisherman, he talks about the spot on the spot, you know, and his point on that in his saying, what he means is when you are fishing the spot on the spot, you might say, hey, the thoroughfare has flounder, but you might find very specific sections on the thoroughfare that might hold more flounder or hold the most fish. So you might catch a fish in 10 feet of water, but you might catch 10 fish in seven feet of water. And you'd want to continue to look for those trends when you're fishing to see if they play out. So very important to use your technologies to help you. Here's a classic example of bait, bigger fish sitting around a bait ball, you know, right here on the, in the bays. Here are active fish that are moving. Anytime you see straight lines that are, that's fish on the move. And that is almost always indicative of a good bite here. We're over by Harbor Island and there's a little ledge here drops off. And obviously, you know, plenty of fish have been caught over there, active fish. One nice thing about uh, your chart plotters and sonar, too, is they give you specific information. So you can choose to share that with friends or just have it for yourself. Um, here's another example of a ton of fish. This is when the big bluefish were here. We're in the uh, bay behind Assateague, and they're staged here. These are generally less active fish, and they were that morning. We had a hard time getting these guys to bite, but we certainly knew they were there. We came back later and had a real good time. Side scan is a newer technology that's really you know great, too. The ability to map out the structure underneath you is pivotable and it really will help you catch a lot more fish okay it allows really detailed visuals at the bottom you can combine that with your chart plotter and allows you to develop a really good fishing strategy and find fishy areas and then you can get a lot more detailed drifts using the mapping software this is an example of some side scan this is a, a stock image but Purnell's reef would look a lot like this even though it'd be in deeper water this isn't quite as uh, deep as what you would see there but you get the idea it's scanning the front of the boats here it's heading this direction this is the water column and then after that is what it scans out to the side so this is an area that's off the bottom because it casts a shadow pretty standard stuff you get used to it after you look at it a little while and you might find like this is a spot you might think how would hold a good resident tog or something you might this might be some really big tog here you can literally push the screen with your finger it creates a, a cursor you can make that a waypoint and label it and you might you know you might label it here too and you might say i'm going to try to see if the drift's coming this way i'll set up so that i can stop over this or throw the anchor and, and stop right over this based on your chart plotter and try to drop around this you might hit this and you know bump 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 drop it down in there and boom flounder or a tall tog or something like that so it really can help you dial and you can use it this is not the inlet, but the inlet actually looks a lot like this in certain spots. Uh, this is the water column here, and clearly this is a very rocky area over here. This is a clear area where the rock, uh, and it shallows up a great deal, and then it drops off over here. So you can see where it shallows up a lot over on this side. The water column also helps you with that. So this would be an area of great amount of rock, and this would be an area with little to no rock. Okay, same here. Hardly any rock here, but big bunches of rock here so this would be your togging area this might be an area that holds some flounder especially right around here but again you can plot this put three points here boop 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 go, go over this and bump troll or anchor or drift if you can get the drift to cooperate go right over this area see if you can catch some flounder right on the edge here you might not lose as many lures drifting right here 
you're going to lose lures drifting through here, hitting the bottom. So to help guide you, hey, it may save you some money. Here's an actual example out on Little Gull Shoal uh, that we did. We were out scanning it, basically used the buoy and did larger and larger circles with our side scan on and found these gigantic boulders sitting in there. These are not man-made. These are gigantic. They've been here for a long time by creation. And um, these are great areas to use. You could, you know, stop up here and chum, try to get some fish to move. You could go over top of it uh, and also try to find fish there as well. So clear, great areas to find for fishing, Okay. Uh, another thing here, let's go along here. So here is an example of a, um, of fish arcs that are moving. These are active fish. You saw that one slide with all this pretty arcs and that stuff would look great in a magazine, but they generally are less active fish. These straight lines that you're getting here, these longer arches and these straight lines, that's fish moving. You know, we're anchored here. These fish are moving right through us. And this proved to be an exceptional, exceptional bite. So uh, using your technologies are help you out. Level three learning is kind of putting that together, you know, gathering, compiling information, you know, starting to use it and then really putting it in a way that really can use it. You know, there's so much information out there that it can become overwhelming. So you really have to find a way to call it together and, and apply it and use it. So uh, level three learning is probably putting lots of data together and developing a fish planner. We use spreadsheets to put uh, data together. I'll show you that. Uh, and then work with a fishing planner that you continue to update. Let's call it revision. So you have a new edition every year. That's going to certainly get better as you update and refine your techniques. Uh, and then level three might even be helping and sharing your information with others, teaching others and kids and adults. So how do we incorporate this data? So what we did for 2016 is we took all the data we found over social media. And I literally screen grabbed it uh, and entered it into a sh spreadsheet and put some information together. So this is literally it. Anything that anyone posted, that if, if I caught wind of it, I grabbed it and I put in the information, the date, the time, if there was tied information, location, species, what was used, how many were caught, and any special notes here, okay? Z-Man plastics, chartreuse was used. Uh, these were three keepers caught on Harbor Island, you know, August 1st. On and on and on, castaways. Uh, someone caught sea bass on squid, and these were real small. Uh, on squid and gulp pieces. So it might be something fun to do with kids. Mary gets a keeper flanner and gulp in the thoroughfare area. And that was, of course, our, our data from when we fished. Uh, 50 bridge, rockfish was caught on spec rig. Uh, 10 of them were caught. Incoming tide at 9 p.m. So incoming tide at night using a spec rig around the 50 bridge might produce rocks and bluefish. You know, again, put the information together, start using it. Now from there, you can graph what species are caught. You can graph location. You know, clearly the 50 bridge was the greatest amount of information reported on catches. Then the inlet was second. And third was the South Jetty. So if you're, if you're looking for places to fish, those are three close by locations that are obviously going to produce. And then here's bait people used that they reported it. And then the months of the year. So, you know, on and on with all of it. So, you know, I created a fish planner using a Word document. And it starts off very simple. And then it's going to develop over the years. And then we printed this out and gave it to friends. And then we referenced it throughout the 2017 season to help us plan fishing activities. It absolutely helped us fi catch fish. It gave us ideas. Um, and also it was kind of really fun to kid around with each other because it was a lot of information. I think I had almost 600 entries in there from the season of people reporting. Uh, so, you know, it's a vast amount of information that's, you know, really, you know, was a lot of useful stuff as well. And, you know, you can kid around with each other. Um, but make sure that you do look closely at these photos and the information. Okay. So there's a, I gave examples at the beginning, but, you know, make sure you do stop and look and see, you know, where this stuff's caught. You know, this shark's caught somewhere relatively near shore you know maybe it's three miles out or something but that's just a quick example look at the lures you're using look at the hooks you're using look at where they're at you know just you know make notes of it you're going to begin to recognize a lot and uh, build on your knowledge okay and you're going to learn stuff from it so you can use this too you know same thing use this technology the social media and the youtube videos and uh, what, what you hear from you know various other sources your scanners your fish finders things like that and you can use it to to find out what's biting now and to help you to approach what's biting now you know we had a recent uh big jump in sheep's head that were around the jetty uh that are available for people to catch that was reported on social media you might read that and say hey i'd like to catch some sheep's head uh, what do they use okay i've i know that they catch sheep's head on this blue and white bass assassin that we saw earlier uh, i know that they like crabs and crustaceans and you can buy some of that i know they're around rocks you know you get the idea you can use all this to start fishing now on what's happening today 
Um, you're also going to get a lot of information on what lure to use, when and where, the tides, and all that kind of stuff uh, that the image tells you and the information tells you. Log that information, and that can be different based on your skill level. Okay, so what's important to you uh, at a certain skill level may not be what's important to someone else at a different skill level. And you can, you know, tailor that to your, your specific amount of experience. Make sure you go back and study this information, though. It doesn't help you just to enter it in it. You have to go back and look at it, make a plan, start referencing it, start using it. Also, what we do, too, um, in freshwater fishing, we always use the approach called FLP, and that standing for, stands for Fish Location Presentation. So whenever you're on a freshwater uh, location, it's not uncommon at all, and it's wise for the fishermen and women to split up tactics. Uh, and then, so if you say we're going to fish for flounder, that's the F. We know that they're located in the West Channel in the thoroughfare, so we're going to try fishing there. That's location. And you have to figure out presentation. Now, there's various types of presentation. There's gulp and there's minnows and, you know, they bite on sand fleas and, you know, they bite on hard lures too. And, you know, you can jig them and, you know, all kinds of stuff, right? So split it up on the boat. Have someone use gulp. Have someone use fish bites. Have someone use... Um, you know, an artificial uh, gulp, you know, have someone use a uh, uh, sand flea if you have it around, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, just split it up, talk and communicate, find out what begins to work. Because I guarantee you there are days that flounder want shiners and they don't want gulp. There are days when they want gulp and they don't want shiners. That's a fact. So split it up. You know, that'll improve your uh, ability to catch fish. Try different techniques, try different lures, and try different locations, okay? That's how you can use this information to help you get better. Now, what we began doing in this year is uh, we started, I got a GoPro for Christmas, which was wonderful. Uh, and then I use a software program called DaVinci Resolve to edit these videos. Uh, it's free software. It's actually extremely robust. My background, in, so is Mary's, is in television production and journalism. Uh, we have different careers now, but that's what we did then. So we were kind of comfortable with this stuff. And we really mainly wanted to do this to capture these moments with our friends and family. All of us having fun catching fish. And we wanted to watch it over the wintertime or during downtime and just enjoy it. We also then kind of transitioned into trying to want to help other people learn how to fish. Where we work, there are people that come up to us and say that they fish. And we ask them, how did they do last weekend? And they'll give us stories about fishing for two or three hours and never catching a fish. That is just not in the cards for Mary and I. Not that we don't get skunked. Not that we don't have bad days. But it is rare to fish that long and not pull some kind of fish out of the, of the bay. So we just began, I just began talking. We began talking and, and all that. And you find out that, you know, is even though I consider Mary and I relatively newbies to this fishery, and we are, uh, evidently we have something to offer. Uh, so we wanted to do that and also promote the joys of fishing. So let me give you an example of, uh, of this here. Hey everybody, Mary and I fished this evening, uh, and had a really fun time right at the end. This was, uh, a day after the nor'easter came through in the weekend. So it left a fairly high water mark and, uh, really dirty water. We were able to fish the outgoing tide in the evening time. We caught a couple flounder. Uh, but the water is really dirty. Uh, it was really during the slack tide. We, we tried to catch a couple. And then we decided to fish for rocks around the Route 50 bridge. We used a one-ounce spro bucktail with a six-inch grub tail. Um, and uh, this fishing tonight was really about precision. Uh, precision casting, precision retrieving, and boat control. Uh, so basically, if we cast the lure in the middle of the, under the 50 bridge, you could catch a couple small ones. But if you cast along the side of the pillars uh, with proper depth and control, uh, we caught better fish. So don't know if that's a pattern or if we got lucky or whatever, but that certainly was the case tonight. So what we were talking about when we were out there was, you know, what would be something we'd recommend people to do if they were here fishing under the bridge? What we'd recommend, of course, is control your depth through lure weight and retrieval speed. Cast all the way under the bridge. Um, and then important. when you're under the bridge, when you're on one side of the pillar we'd probably try to cast right alongside of it then we'd make a diagonal cast to the other pillar on the other side uh to the right say and then bring it across then a couple casts in the middle and then we get to the other side the, on the other pillar as we go to the next as we're heading east and west we would cast to the other pillar diagonally bring it across and then finish with some close cast right alongside the pillar we're closest to so that along with real precise boat control I think really helped Mary get into some better fish tonight. So, 
So you get the idea. I mean, we try to put information in it that will help others be able to fish uh, and catch fish. Because again, we kind of had some problems getting some of this information and saltwater fishing, you know, as in all fishing, you know, the details can matter a lot. And we just want to share that information. You can look at other videos on the website. Now, obviously, there's going to be cons to using this technology, right? You know, if you're making videos and you're taking pictures and you're sharing this stuff, you know, people are going to see your location. So you're going to have some uh, spot burn that happens with it. Uh, you're showing your techniques at work, both lures and bait and all that. Now other people are going to take this and catch, you know, quote, your fish, right? They're also going to be able to take your keepers. If you make people better fishermen and fisherwomen, they're going to catch better fish and all that. So, you know, they, you know, more fishermen, more boats, going to be crowded, uh, you know, as a result of catching fish, no matter who you are, you know, fish are going to die because they're going to get mortally wounded. So, you know, you're going to contribute to some of that. I mean, these are these are things that are just part of this, you know, of, of sharing this and having this. And then, you know, as people learn about your spots and where you are, when you go out to fish, people are going to be in your spot. You're not going to be able to fish there. And that's a bummer. And also there's a potential for more inexperienced anglers around you when you're fishing. And uh, my experience is the less experienced anglers and boaters uh, are, are, they can be dangerous. Uh, uh, so that there's risk there. But there are a lot of pros to using this technology. Uh, you use this and incorporate the stuff I've given you today and there's more. Uh, that you'll find on your own and you can share with me, I hope, uh, you're going to get more confidence. You're going to have more fun because you're going to have uh, better results, you know, and, and that's going to be great. It's going to give you ideas. You're going to catch more fish. You're going to have more success with friends and family. You're going to have more keepers as well. You know, as you get better at this, you, you know, you're going to pull in better fish. There's no doubt about it. You're also going to be more efficient with your time on the water. You're going to go out with ideas and plans. You're going to train the fishermen and women around you, and they're going to also help you uh, find fish because they're going to have ideas too based on what you've talked about and what they've experienced. Uh, you also continually refine your tactics and techniques. I've seen people catch flounder on bacon. I've seen them catch uh, stripers and gummy worms. Shrimp is something that no one around here was talking about until after I saw a video and went into the tackle shop, and the guy said, oh, yeah, some old-timers use shrimp. And I thought, well, I'm going to try it. And it worked just fine. I've read people using shad darts, super little shad darts. We have a friend uh, that does uh, Fong, my buddy. He had a friend come down this weekend and fish with us. He used a teeny little white freshwater lure, a 16th ounce or 8th ounce, real t I think it was 8th ounce, real small lure, teeny hooks, and pulled flounder right out of it with it. I mean, it was shocking to me. But, you know, mimicked more of that glass minnow. So, you know, makes sense. You know, there's ideas like chumming the bay and fishing with lights and other different locations, unexplored locations. Um, you're going to have more knowledge and you're going to have better results when you go to other locations. So say you go take a traveling trip to South Carolina, Florida, wherever to fish. You know, obviously the better you've worked at improving yourself as a fisherman, fisherwoman, you know, the, you know, the better you're going to be other, other, at other places. And another bit pro too is the life clock is ticking, you know. I mean, we're all on the earth for a finite amount of time. And this makes a little bit better use of your off fishing time and it reduces your learning curve. Another big thing too is is you can pass this along and help others learn, you know. Who doesn't want to help a little child learn how to fish? You know, Big Bird is an example of a gentleman who shares his knowledge readily uh, to people, and we appreciate it greatly. You know, it helps us be better fishermen, and he gets a lot of joy out of it, uh, just like we do, and we do appreciate it. Here's another young man. He's going to college. He's down here on internship. He watched some of the YouTube videos. He said he had a boss. He said, hey, you take me out on your boat. I'll catch you fish. He relied on our information, uh, caught some nice rockfish under the bridge using the one-ounce bucktail. Uh, then he whacked some blues, you know. He said, being new here, I really appreciate your information. It's, it has resulted in me getting on a lot of fish right away, and he thanked me. So, you know, it's great. So, you know, from here, you know, you go beyond that. You know, some people really share very specific advanced information, I would call it. You know, and this is stuff we all can learn from, even if you're very experienced. I mean, this is... Uh, you're going to learn something new by exploring uh, some of the technology. Here's a gentleman, Matt Ellis, who really likes to catch tall tog and flounder. And he spends a lot of time working on his flounder techniques and his skills. And it shows. And he recently won a tournament because of it. So he talks about on here, he's got these gulp baits that he used. And they get bit off, of course. You know, all the fish around, they get chewed up. And he, like, stitches these things together. He started off using... Um, zip uh, or uh, thread needle and then he went to zip ties and it's better he also takes his jig heads and he believes it's his theory that he if you make some squiggles and some contrasting colors on the jig heads that it helps the flounder see 
the lure and bite better. Uh, and uh, someone like Sean Kimbrough, who uh, talks about light tackle in the Chesapeake Bay, he was a firm believer in contrasting colors for stripers. So these guys give very specific information. Uh, so he's talking about when he fished as well, you know, hour before the end of incoming and he had zero bites. Um, you know, talking about the noise on the bridge. And then uh, as soon as it went slack, the fish went nuts. He says just about every drop for 15, 20 minutes, boom, 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 fish, fish, fish. And then boom, nothing, not even a bump. So, you know, very important information. Okay, slack time can be a really great time to fish the 50 bridge and at night. You know, there are lights there. I didn't even think flounder, flounder bit at night. I mean, I didn't. We caught one as a fluke one time, uh, no pun intended, and, uh, you know, couldn't believe it was biting at night. But around the bridge, you know, they're going to bite at night. Flounder are very aggressive. Um, here's another one. He uh, likes to fish night, a couple hours around the high and low. He starts off fishing shallow water and sandbars, and he jigs his bucktail with a teaser above it aggressively. He adds a pause in the jigging every now and then, and it seems to trigger a strike. That's great information because that's that works. Um, and then he gave the fish away. So on and on and on. This guy, you know, just great information. There's really good advanced knowledge out there. There is something for you to learn. So the future plans for Mary and I and the fishermen and women we're around is just to create a more accurate fish planner through research and our time on the water. I'd like to get the GoPros underwater to observe things. I know other people have physically like gone down and scuba or snorkeled and looked around and that's really cool. Uh, I want to take the GoPros and do it. The side scan technology, we're going to continue to use more and more to develop bottom contours, get educated on the bottom, find fishy areas. And then we're going to all use, of course, use these things to refine our techniques and become better. One added benefit for me is my wife likes to fish. If I get her on fish and she has a good time, it helps me spend more money on fishing and more time, which is all a big plus for me. There's other technologies out there, too, that we might use down the road. Different fish finders are out now, 360 degree scanning. Maybe there's some other social media to look at I haven't. There's also other um, theories and all to check out. The solunar charts, the barometric pressure, which I think is fairly accurate. It's certainly the moon phase uh, is just something to look at. I haven't looked at it too much, except full moons at night, rockfish-like. I mean, that's just something I know, you know, from going out there and trying it. Uh, the use of drones. We, my buddy has a drone. He loves to film, uh, shoot video with it. There's certainly ways. There's other video on my YouTube channel or on my personal channel, Brian Mullins, um, that has uh, aerial footage in the winter. And it drives around just around our village here uh, in West Ocean City. You can you can see the bottom very clearly. And it's, it's actually video. It's not Google pictures. It's actually video. Uh, so thanks a lot. I hope this helps you out. Please give me feedback if you have any technology you use and you can put A and B together to produce some fishing results. I'd love to hear about it. Uh, leave a comment here, whatever. And I hope you guys use this. Hope it makes you uh, get some better fish. And I hope it have, allows you to have more fun and allows you to help share this great, enjoyable activity with other people.